Hey guys and girls, we've got a uh, 13 plate Suzuki uh, sorry wait, we've got a 13 plate Citroen um, DS3. This has got 1.6 diesel. The 1.6 diesel engine in. Uh, just doing some little, just checking it out really, uh, because it's got low oil and it's a pretty new car. How many miles has it done? 8,000 8, miles. Seven and a half, I think. Seven and a half thousand miles. We've found that we have got a lot of oil here in the turbo. Ah, oh, excuse me, finger. This, this is in the pipe going to this the is intercooler. In, this is in the pipe going to the intercooler. This is like a lot. If anything, there should be a slight, maybe yeah. a slight, you know, uh, it's, coating. It's actually been coming out. Look, tip, when, we, when we took the Jubilee clip off, as yeah, you can yeah. see, it was actually pouring out onto the heat shield. That's like. Not good. You imagine how full the intercooler is of oil. Of course, it's got the uh, long type intercooler where it air goes in one side and pulls out the other. So the bottom of the intercooler is probably absolutely full of oil. Surely that can't be efficient, really. All these modern systems on cars, DPFs and whatnot, napping up the engines. And then there's stuff like this. Which oh yeah. Hasn't got a hose clamp on it at all. And that's after the MAF sensor. Yeah, it's a fantastic it's system. Cool. Yeah, fantastic. I think Citroen's going to be getting a ring tomorrow. Yeah, yeah I think so. So I think, yeah, we're going to, because you don't know if the turbo, because the turbo started making a funny noise. Oops. All your finger marks all over the car. Because the, the, uh, the turbo was making a funny noise, wasn't it? It was, what Mom yeah. Said. Shifting through, I've took it round the block. Hmm. Shifting through gears, you can hear the turbo whine. Really bad. Not really bad, but it's there. Yeah. Which obviously is not a good thing. It really isn't a good thing. Uh, and also on these, so on I don't EPS know if cars. we're not sure about this really on this because when we have this yeah, car, it might be hot. It will be very hot. <laughs> There's no pressure in it. Yeah, oh, there we go. Degrees. There was a pressure in it, but not much. Yeah, the coolant's very dark inside it as well, and that's obviously never been changed. That's but it's only a basically a one year old car, yeah, or well, almost two years old now. Coolant's quite dark in there, though you can still see into it. <laughs> it shouldn't be like that, I don't think. I don't think mine it should be dark, pristine. yeah. So we're thinking well, maybe some of our carbon's possibly got into, got into it, coolant, which isn't good. So guys and girls, I don't know if you guys have got a DS3 or not, but you want to check that out, see if the, uh, so you know, all you've got to do is just take the one Jubilee clip off, the engine cover, which just pulls off on this. This engine is shared in a lot of Citroëns and Peugeots, and it's generally referred to as the 1.6 HDI. This is the eHDI with the auto start stop, but, mm. yeah. Although the auto start stop is never, is never used as much because this is a manual. Yeah. And start stop on a manual is quite a pain in the arse to actually make make it do it. Yeah, Shift it into it in neutral, neutral and then take your foot off the clutch. Oh, foot off the clutch, yeah. A pain in the backside. Okay guys and girls. Uh just one you need to check out on I think. Uh this could be a design fault with the car with the engine or it could be turbo seals that's gone. It's a fairly new car, like I said, it's not this so many is miles. The PCV valve here. Still under warranty. I wanted to take this off and see what it's like inside that, so we know what it's like pre-turbo. Yeah, I like how that's got no um, no seals, no on, seals it. on it at all. Yeah. If you look on the Suzuki, it's got a Jubilee clip on, on every, every hose. On every hose, even yeah. Even the really low pressure ones. Yeah. But that's Japanese for you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> French. God. They cut corners. They I, mean, do. I think this is horrendous. <laughs> yeah, it, it's bad. just pushed on. I mean, okay, yeah. it probably makes an okay seal, but... but... It could be better. Yeah. Yeah. That's for engine management codes. We've got a little reader thing which can... We can erase them. We can erase them. So we're going to do a bit some tests on this and see what happens now, so... We're going to have a I'm going to have a look at this or this uh, seal and see what kind of oil comes out of it. Out of this... Uh, not the seal, the, uh, the pipe. I'm going to start it up without the turbo engaged. Just to see what happens. Yeah, we'll unplug the EGR and give it a bit of a rev while we're standing. Yeah. That way the turbo will spool up still. Yeah, yeah. Alright then. Where is the EGR on this thing anyway? That's it, here. Oh, nice and easy to get to. It just takes... You push this clip back. Yeah. If you can get into it. 
like that. And then there's a little clip here, which you just lift off and you push the connector back like that. You just disable it. You'll get an engine management light for doing that, but that will it disable won't it. it in limp mode. On this, it just generally brings up a service light. And it another thing, the, uh, what about your DPF? Does it stop your DPF from regening? I think it does on this car, yeah. Yeah. And see. it will inject about 300 millilitres more of fuel when ticking over, unfortunately. Oh. Lovely. So I don't recommend unplugging the EGR on this for extended time. Alright, let's start it up and see what happens. Alright. You got the key anyway, I've got a bit of paper here, so. Well, I wanted to take off the. Uh, the what? No, it's fine. It's, it's not going to go It's anyway. not touching the heat shield. No, it's not. We're not going to have it running long enough. I might get nice cool turbo sounds now. Fuck me, it's a new something. The engine management light on full. Because the EGR's disconnected, oh, it right. helps these engines shut off. Oh right. Yeah. Is this positive crank pressure? Do you know? It is. Yeah. <laughs> the oil level's about a quarter from full. Yeah. So it's almost full, but it is on an incline. Don't forget. Yeah. It's pretty nasty looking stuff. Yes. Not very good looking, oh, do you want to hold the camera for a second while I just clean that? In my car, it's not looking bad at all after having the EGR disabled. You know, it still looks brand new, and I've done about a thousand miles. Ah, <laughs> really? Yeah. EGR's disabled and so is the PCV. Alright, so what I'll do here, guys, is I'll just show you the oil level in the car. I'm surprised how well it revved, mm. even without the turbo. Yeah. Shows don't need one. Yeah, it does. So it's yeah. pretty rancid yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's pretty black but oil, isn't it? Yeah. It's gone down a bit. I reckon it's lost that through the turbo because yeah. mine hasn't lost anything. I mean, okay, two different engines, but I don't think a modern diesel should lose that much. No. That much stuff. It's a shame we can't find out the DPF loading on this. Mm because we'd know how quick it's filling up and obviously if it's burning oil it's going to be mo making a bit of smoke yeah, exactly, yeah but we can't see anything with the DPF on yeah. oh, aye, so guys and girls, there you go it's blasted it everywhere, it has, hasn't it? it, yeah, it's <laughs> come over everything that has oh god, it's, oh, it's all this. over here, yeah right, I think we'll uh, call it yeah, that's it. Call it a video. That's it, yeah, yeah. Let's sort all this out and tidy it up. Yeah, it has, it's throwing it everywhere. <coughs> rust proofing? Yeah. <laughs> Let's drive around with your turbo disconnect and just rust proof everything. <laughs> all this side of the engine is rust proof. Alright, guys and girls, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all on the next video. Peace out. Yep, see you guys. <laughs> Oh, hey guys and girls. Right, we just going um, have a little look on this here. And, um, well, this is the pipe leading into the turbo. And as you can see, it's pretty clean. There's, there's a little tiny bit of oil in there. 
but there's hardly anything compared to what's coming out the turbo and obviously now we've just tried it without the turbo without we've got the pipes off the turbo and whatnot and obviously this is the crankcase breather there's a bit of oil in there but nothing to write home about that's just natural crankcase breathers do do that um you see the turbo in there That's the turbo in there spinning around happily. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that the oil is coming from the turbo itself, not from the breather, because we've just revved the engine and nothing came out of this. I, I had the rag in front of it in a clean part of the rag and there wasn't any bits of oil on the rag. Um, but obviously coming out of this, it's it's not very nice, it's all over it. Which is not good. Not good at all. So yeah, it's um, it's one of those things, we're going to have to ring them up and ask them about it, you know. I think the turbo's got a leak on it and it sounds a bit funny, what's cracking off? As you can see there, nothing's coming out of that. Yeah, as you can see there... Makes some noises, doesn't it, this bloody engine? Mm. <laughs> All the PWM controlled stuff on it. Man, how engines have moved on. Or moved back. Well, yeah. <laughs> It's bought more things to it that's controlled by electronics. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, the problem is with oil coming through this as well, is it coats your intercooler and doesn't make it as efficient. As efficient, exactly, yeah. Plug all the things back in again. Okay, guys and girls, well, that's it really. So now what we can really do. We've tested it out and you saw there was oil coming out of here and not from out of here, so, you know. Yeah. One can only... One can only assume the oil seals and the turbos are acting up. Yeah. Are not happy for some reason. Okay, guys and girls, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next video. Peace out. Oh right, there the baffles are. It's a baffle that is Ooh, on the exit. Crikey me, yeah, look how much oil there is in it. Yeah, it's dripping look out. Look at it. Good God. That can't be good. That's not right, that. Citroen DS3 and it's got all that oil stuck in the... 7,500 miles. Yeah. 7,500 miles. And that's from out... The... Basically, you've got your turbo, which is, I think it's on this side, just here. Mm -hmm. And then that goes towards your intercooler. intercooler. So you'd have your airbox over here somewhere, a pipe leading towards the turbo, which has normally got a breather in from the crankcase. You've got your turbo here, baffles which they put on modern day cars now to make the turbo quiet, which I think is pointless, because everyone likes a, everyone likes a turbo sound. And uh, yeah, then you've got it going down to your it's like a tube that's got ridges in it. Yeah. And well, you'll see in the other video if you watch it. Yeah, check out the other video in the Citroen. The ridges guys of. Uh, I'll probably cut this out and put it in that video. Yeah. The ridges are full of oil anyway. Yeah. Christ, that's not good. That's on the car with seven and a half thousand miles on the clock. You know, you expect it on something this old, but crikey me. That's just terrible. That. 